Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Airbus is well known throughout Europe for its commitment to quality products. This can clearly be seen in its partnership with Safran, often considered the world leader in aircraft landing and braking systems. For instance, the landing gear for the Airbus A350-900 incorporates a wide range of advanced technologies designed to optimize the plane's weight and reliability while reducing operating costs. The process is done completely in-house and starts with engineers creating both digital and physical mock-ups. Once a working design is completed, the manufacturing team takes over. Safran uses precision machining tools to shape components down to the millimeter, heat treating them to improve their corrosion resistance and overall toughness. They can then be coated, painted, and quality checked to ensure there are no imperfections. Finally, the assembly begins. This is done by hand and machine to ensure each moving part is in perfect alignment. Of course, the landing gear will undergo rigorous testing long before it is fitted onto a real aircraft. By handling all of this on site, Safran can make sure each product they ship out meets their rigorous quality control standards. Another high profile company that Airbus has partnered with, Daher Socata, a French company that produces both aircraft and aircraft components. The two companies have a long history of collaboration, even though Daher is mostly known for producing smaller, private aircraft. Airbus has long relied on them for important items, such as landing gear doors. Using the latest technology and high-end computerized fabrication techniques, Daher Sokata is able to produce state-of-the-art door sections that provide Airbus with the quality and reliability they demand. Robotics play a huge role in the fabrication process as they are able to construct highly accurate final products with very minimal margins of error. While aerospace engineering is often relegated to wings, airfoils, and high-powered engines, the landing gear is still among the most important components of any modern aircraft. However, this is especially true of military aircraft. In the Air Force or Navy, planes are often held to much more extreme performance standards than planes that only fly commercially. This includes frequent checking, service, and repair. At Hill Air Force Base in Utah, a private company like Heavy Lifter Assemblies can be found right on site. As the Air Force's only landing gear overhaul facility, we provide all landing gear for all aircraft on all weapon systems, C-17, A-10, F-16, F-15, F-35, B-1, B-2, C-5, C-130. We provide the only source for our landing gear overhaul for the United States Air Force. This landing gear overhaul process is performed every six to 10 years, depending on the type of aircraft. It is an extremely detailed process requiring multiple experts working over a long period of time. 
During this process, more than 2,000 different parts can be removed, evaluated for damage, cleaned, and replaced. From disassembly to stripping and beyond, the process is exhaustively documented to make sure every individual part is properly inspected and replaced. In Ogden, Utah, just north of Hill Air Force Base, one can find the 532nd Commodities Maintenance Squadron, known as the U.S. Air Force's Landing Great Overhaul Center of Excellence. This facility is responsible for maintaining, repairing, overhauling, and modifying landing gear, wheels, and brakes for all 17 Air Force weapon systems. Where heavy lifting assemblies handles regular overhauls, the 532nd takes unserviceable gear and returns it to like new condition. This includes a very precise disassembly procedure, followed by an initial inspection to identify parts that are beyond repair early in the overhaul process. Components are then cleaned, stripped, and blasted to remove grease, paint, and any factory coatings that might be installed. Each item is then inspected using a variety of different methods, including fluorescent light inspection and structural integrity inspection. This is done both visually and mechanically to eliminate error. The components are then replated, ground, painted, and sent back to the assembly department. As complex as landing gear can be, it has nothing on an aircraft engine. While jet engines can be dumbed down into simple components like inlet, compressor, combustion chamber, and turbine, each of these components have thousands of individual parts that must all move together to power the aircraft. In the Air Force and Navy, jet engines are regularly evaluated and inspected. In terms of maintenance, the engine will be taken apart, cleaned, and serviced roughly every 3,000 flight cycles. The first step in this process is, of course, removing the existing engine from the jet itself. This involves first taking the weapons off and then separating the engine from the airframe. The engine is supported through this process by a heavy lifting cart, which also allows the engine to be moved directly into a repair hangar. Once the engine is in the repair shop, it first undergoes a thorough inspection. This includes looking at the engine's complete history to identify any performance issues it might be experiencing. As the inspection continues, maintenance crews will begin to assemble a scope of work. The engine is then disassembled down into basic components, which are cleaned and then given an even more thorough inspection. At this point, components will be separated into static parts and rotating parts. The latter are subject to much more wear and tear due to the fact that they are in constant motion during flight. As with the landing gear parts, each individual component must be carefully cleaned and inspected before reassembly. Those that need to be repaired are either tended to or replaced. After cleaning, repair, and reassembly, military jet engines still need to be carefully tested before they are put into a mission-ready aircraft. This is typically done in a special facility known as a hush house. These are enclosed, 
noise-suppressed hangars big enough with special intake and exhaust systems that block the transmission of noise while also allowing for optimized airflow. The chambers usually seen in a hush house are connected to special vents that safely redirect the exhaust upward and out of the facility. Though it's common to see hush houses accommodating aircraft with the engine still inside, it is easier for techs to repair engines in their freshly reassembled state. In this case, the engine will be held in place by thrust frames, allowing it to be powered up without flying out the hush house door. Because they are so commonplace, it's easy to forget just how complex civilian and military aircraft can be. From the engines to the landing gear and everywhere in between, these vehicles incorporate some of the most advanced technology in the world. In turn, that technology requires frequent inspection, repair, and sometimes replacement in order to keep pilots and crew members safe. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.